I know some players are having a hard time beating the AI, especially when they're attacking or when they're playing uh, uh, play by email, they're finding it difficult to beat their opponent. So I've got some uh, tips here on how to use your forces in a, in a better way to hopefully equalize the battlefield for you. In this first example, the three German stacks here want to move up into a firing position here so they can fire on this Russian stack here. The wrong way to do this would be in your move phase is to move each stack up like this into a firing position. And the reason this is the, the wrong way to go about this is because now the Russian stack here has two opportunities to fire on the German stacks before they can do their next action. So following the move phase, we have the defensive fire phase. So the Russian stack here can choose to fire on any three of these. And then we will move on to the Russian phase and they will get another chance to fire on the German stacks before the German stacks themselves can fire back. A better way to approach this would be to move your three German stacks up to these three hexes here and then wait until the assault phase to move them into firing line of sight of the enemy stack. So like this, this is our German movement phase. We now move on to the Russians defensive fire phase and as you can see they've got no eligible targets. And then we have the advance and assault phase for the Germans. And now we move them into the position we want to get them to. Then it would move on to the Russian uh, phase next. And they will only get the one chance to fire on one of these three German stacks before it then returns to the German defensive fire. One of the guiding principles you should follow is to maximize the firepower you can put onto one enemy hex so that you can suppress that stack. In this case, we're talking about this Russian stack and get as close to assaulting it as soon as possible before any reinforcements can come up to support it. So in this case, I would be looking to use the two stacks of leaders because they give you, in this case, a minus two and a minus one, which helps to negate some of the effects of the fact that the stack is in a building. I would fire this one first, see how much damage I can do to the stack, and hopefully you want to pin them. And then I'd fire this one second, and providing there was some success there, <coughs> I would be using this stack here to move adjacent to the Russian stack, hope it doesn't take too much damage, and then to assault and get rid of this stack as quickly as possible. So let's see that in action. So we got a good first result and we've weakened that stack. Let's do it again. Another good result. And this is ideal because we've actually pinned a unit as well. Then we have the move phase and we're gonna attract some fire here with some bonuses to the Russians. And we suffered some casualties here. Let's go ahead and there's no AI defensive fire. And let's go ahead and assault that stack. So we're gonna immediately wipe out this pin unit. So we're actually only faced with two units to assault here. So one to one. But we managed to succeed. So we lost uh, one and a half stacks here, wiped out a whole German, uh, and we wiped out a whole Russian stack here. So I'd call that a victory in this case. In this next example, I want to talk about really using your support weapons and their ranges to the maximum effect. So in this example here with the allied player, we have a stack here with a heavy machine gun, range of eight, and a Russian mortar team, which also has a range of eight. So this, uh, this stack here is heavy machine gun. It can basically cover this whole area around here and right up to the top here, making it very difficult for the, the access forces to advance 
without the risk of taking some casualties. And then we've got this mortar unit in the background supporting it. Again, range of eight, pretty much can cover most of this map board here. Again, making it very difficult for the German player to advance without taking casualties. You need to be looking out for this kind of opportunity all the time when you're playing. In this next example, I want to cover how to maximize your firepower while minimizing your opponent's firepower. So here we're the uh, Americans and our primary goal here is we decided that we're gonna focus on this German stack here and try and unhinge their defense. To show you some good placement and for a moment, I just want you to ignore this stack and then here we have a heavy machine gun and then just uh, some infantry squads. So if we look at the line of sight for this German stack, they can't fire on any American units. This one, as I said, ignore this one for a second. They also can't fire on any of these US stacks. And same goes for this one. So we've managed to effectively maximize our firepower on this German squad here and minimize the impact of the German defenders. This one here is an example of a bad placement. Um, as you can see, every German stack apart from this one can fire on it. So we've now allowed three quarters of the German stacks to have a valid target in their defensive phase or indeed their next fire phase. And therefore you've pretty much equalized their ability to attack you, fire at you, and the equal to the Americans' ability to fire back. In this last example, uh, I want to cover a couple of points. So we have here is the access fire phase. We have a, a mortar unit with a commander, and we have three US stacks here. So it's our far phase. And there's a couple of things I want to cover here. First is um, you really need to focus on knocking out the enemy leaders or the unit stack with them. A minus two leader with a stack, you know, and support weapons is a very powerful stack. And the quicker you can weaken this, destroy it, the more chances you'll have of winning the game. In this example, I want to show you what I would pick for my mortar target. So everything's in range here. The German mortar can fire six. Um, as I said, this would normally be my first target choice. Um, it's a minus two leader. It's a very powerful stack. Uh, the more you can weaken it, the better. This would be my second. Uh, again, minus one leader. And this is a leaderless stack. In this case, however, the mortar has double effect when firing into wooded hexes and we're in the wooded hexes for both these stacks. So my fire target here would most certainly be this stack here, looking to wear that one down um, as much as possible. And this brings up another important point is where you have things like mortars, basically long range weapons. Maybe they can't do too much damage, but you want to make sure that every turn they have a target to fire on. And basically you're looking to wear your enemy down by attrition, making it difficult for them to move up. Make sure they have units constantly pinned and therefore they're not operating as efficiently as the opponent player would like them. So there we have it. I hope these tips help you win future battles. Um, let me know any feedback you have in or comments in the section below. Thank you.